And I'm going to invite up Nina Johansson. I've had the privilege of knowing Nina since we were in second grade. We played softball together um, and then like didn't see each other for years. But you know some people like you don't recognize at all and they could have been in your class for five years and you have no idea who they are. But then some people you see them and it's like you're Nina. I mean it was I don't know I just like so we've gotten to know each other again over the last couple of years and that's fun. Um, and she's going to just share her testimony with us this morning. So I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, just that Nina's willing to open her heart and share her story with us, Lord. Um, I just pray that your peace would just rain down on her right now, and I pray that you'd give her the words that you want her to say. God, I pray that you'd open each of our hearts um, and make us receptive to what you have for each of us to hear. God, I pray um, just for each of us to glean at least one truth um, from something she shares with us this morning. God, I just pray just over this time. We give you this morning, we give you um, what she has to share, God, and just pray that um, you'd speak through her right now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, I'm nervous, so bear with me. (laughs) So um, I just want to first start with saying the last 24 hours um, have been so hard for me. I've been under attack. Um, The enemy did not want me to speak today, so it's crazy how that works, but Um, Out of nowhere, I was in the middle of crying and just, I had enough yesterday, and um, I hear a voice, and a lady showed up at my front door, literally, while mascara was running down my face. Um, I had just um, got done disciplining my son, uh, and I was just kind of at my wit's end, and um, she wanted to share the word of the Lord with me, and it was just like, the timing was impeccable. let me remind you, I live in the middle of nowhere on 40 acres. Um, we, like, don't even see traffic at all. So it was just, it was crazy. So it was just God's way of showing me that he's there for me. He's there for all of us. And he shows up when we, um, when we need it the most. So, all right. Um, when I was asked to come and share my story, um, a little bit about my spiritual journey and being a mom, I immediately froze up and wanted to decline politely. Um, So many thoughts came rushing into my head. I'm not a good public speaker. Um, I'm not a seasoned Christian. Um, What if I get anxiety? What will people think? The enemy was trying to fill my head with worrisome. But the more I prayed about it, the more I felt God pushing me to step out of my comfort zone and into where he wanted me to be, being obedient. So I obliged, and now I'm standing in front of all of you lovely ladies. Um, I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I would occasionally go to St. Williams on Easter and on Christmas, but without the strong foundation of Christianity, I found myself not always making the best decisions growing up. After high school, I moved to San Diego, and I found myself wrapped up in a very shallow and materialistic world, making acquaintances with girls that cared more about their monthly allowances, their heavy spending habits, and the party nightclub scene. Needless to say, I wasn't becoming who I knew I wanted to be. I knew deep down that these people did not have my best interests at heart, and they definitely were not seeking Jesus. After college and years of being lost, I finally decided to move back home. Fast forwarding a little bit, I uh, met my now husband. When I met him, he was charming, handsome, fun to be around, the life of the party, He knew how to have a good time, and so did his friends. We continued to date, and with that, at times, be unresponsible. Going out to the bars on the weekend, the midweek concerts, VIP wine passes, that's really what our relationship was based upon at first. Even though we didn't make the right decisions all the time, him and his family were attending ABC Church, and soon after, I started to as well. At first, I was just going through the motions, just being present, um, being accounted for for a Sunday service, listening to the sermons, but not really being here. 
How could we when we were not practicing Christians? Even though we called ourselves one, our weekends were still filled with heavy wine drinking and partying. It wasn't until I got married that I felt the change in my heart, in my soul. I was tired, tired of not living a life full of a lot of meaning. Something felt like it was missing. I was seeking that missing part in all the wrong places. I thought becoming a successful business owner, a wife, and trying to be a good person was enough, and I was wrong. I remember one night, after a really bad argument with my husband, I just broke down. I cried and cried, and I prayed for Jesus for help, for his guidance, for his love, to give me that burning desire to know him as he knows me, to understand what I was reading when I picked up a Bible, instead of just seeing words that didn't make any sense to me, to take away the anxiety I had been dealing with for four years, to fill my emptiness inside of me. At that moment, I literally felt the heaviness lift, and I really felt the presence of God. I knew I wanted to, a different life than the one we were living. I wanted a family of my own. I wanted to be a mom that my kids would respect and look up to. I wanted a home that wasn't just lovely on the outside, but a sanctuary on the inside. I needed Jesus. In the past, picking up the Bible was so hard for me. I would make excuse, excuses. I was too busy. I didn't have time for it. Or when I picked it up, I couldn't understand what I was reading. It was literally like a foreign language to me. The enemy was attacking me. He would make me scared and full of anxiety, and I would immediately stop reading and put it away. That had all changed. I was starting to understand those precious life-giving words for the first time. Very soon, like a few days after this happened, um, we found out we were expecting our first child. I was so excited. I had been waiting for this moment my whole entire life. I knew I wanted to be a mother and to give life to another being, but it also scared me because our lifestyle wasn't exactly what I had imagined for our family. So I continued even more from that moment on to seek out Jesus. I would make time to read my Bible. I would go to church faithfully. I started attending Mom to Mom and the Tuesday Bible studies, which I love here. It's a great group of women. And behold, changes were taking place. I had no more anxiety, except for right now. <laughs> no more worries. I knew God was in control, and feeling, the feeling was amazing. At home, changes were, at home, changes were taking place as well. I found myself not arguing back with my husband when, I, when he was in one of his moods. I would literally sit there and say nothing in response, just listen, which is not me. <laughs> I was changing. My views on life and what I seeked out were becoming different. Our son came, and I was so in love. He was beautiful, healthy, and so innocent. He was perfect, and God made him, and he chose me to be his mother and for us to be his parents. We were so blessed. At first, parenthood was a little tough for our family as a whole. I had my business still, and so did my husband. We both worked six days a week, sometimes seven. Life had to change once again. Ultimately, I decided to close my shop so I could work from home and focus on being a wife and a mom. The transition was hard. I was not used to working, and I was used to working and interacting with adults, not changing diapers and being up every two hours and being on someone else's schedule, not your own. But after the adjustment period had passed, I quickly adapted to our new normal. My husband, not so much. His priorities were not always in the right place, or at least that's what I was thinking. I had been so focused on working on myself and thinking, gosh, why am I changing and he's not? But I realized instead of attacking him on his own journey's growth, I had to be that prayerful wife and lift him up. I prayed and prayed, and God told me that his journey with him will come at his own time. His role as a parent and as a husband is his struggle, not mine. I needed to continue to live by example and choose not to surround myself in non-healthy environments, choose not to argue back, choose kind words over harsh words, continue to work on myself and being the best mom and wife I can be. It was difficult. It is difficult. But I can't tell you how much God has blessed us the last two years. Literally, fast forwarding to present day, my husband is now the one that wants to go to Sunday service. Um, he recently went to a men's breakfast here at ABC. Uh, we openly talk about our Sunday service messages at home. 
he is an amazing father to our son. Sure does he make mistakes, but we all make mistakes. All that matters is we continue to grow. We continue to move forward in our spiritual journey. I look back at how far we both have come, and it shows a great testament of faith and God's love for us. Last year, I decided to get baptized. When I learned I would have to do it in front of 200 plus people here at an 11 a.m. service, I almost froze once again. Um, But by God's grace, my husband decided he wanted to get baptized too. It was a miracle, such a blessing and special moment for our family. We are all sinners in need of a savior. Jesus doesn't want us to be perfect. He wants us to be his. Isaiah 29, 13 says, These people come near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is merely human rules that they have been taught. We just can't follow the rules by attending a Bible study or an occasional Sunday service. We have to follow Jesus completely. Marriage, being a mom, and a Christian woman in today's society is difficult. The struggle is real. With all the temptations and obstacles we have to face every day, we, have all, we all have a past. We all have a journey ahead of us. But sharing our broken pieces can help others. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. When we invite him into our lives, he fixes, he heals, and he renews us. Thank you.